All right, Friday, um, September 10th. So I wanted to make a quick video because one of um, a comment on a previous video, the guy requested this. Okay, BX wire. It is included in our, our knob and tube rewires because it is a two conductor cloth wire that's not grounded, okay? <clears throat> that outer jacket is not a grounding conductor. Grounded or grounded, but it's not a grounded conductor, okay? And this is the reason why it's not a grounded conductor. When they brought the BX wire into switch boxes and outlet boxes, it was never bonded to the switch box, okay? It just comes in there and sits there. And oftentimes there's not even a stress relief to it. So when we're doing these style, uh, when, when you're installing electric, your ground is, is bonded to the electrical box and then the device, okay? That's a grounded conductor. The problem is there are times that guys at some point in time took the, the green ground screw from the device and then bonded it to the box because the BX wire. That is not a grounded conductor. Okay, it will read a ground, but that does not mean it's grounded. It is a false ground. And the reason being is the only reason that's reading a ground is because that BX wire is going through different junction boxes and it's just touching the side of the metal boxes and then going back to the panel. So you'll, you'll read a ground, but, and this is why it is dangerous, okay? That doesn't mean it'll trip a breaker, okay? Uh, when you, if it's not a solid bond on those metal boxes, okay? When you go and you, you, you tap, say you tap the hot conductor up against the side there, it'll arc, but that does not mean it's bonded enough to trip the breaker, okay? That's where you get into problems, okay? And that's where that BX wire is not deemed to ground. Okay, so there are homes for BX wire was used in the 1920s all the way up to 1950. Okay, until we transitioned over to a rubber jacketed conductor. Okay, before 1950, it was a cloth based wire that it they called it rubber in books, but it wasn't really a rubber, it was more like a tar based cotton substance it's it's we call it cloth conductors okay in the field it's called a cloth conductor okay up until the time when like a, a petroleum product was invented that was wrapped around the conductors and then that's our modern day romex wire so knob and tube in the 1920s they used this bx style wire to run wires to the first floor and then single conductors took over from there before 1920, you can find structures that have individual knob and two wires ran in the basement, okay? So the transition of knob and tube was knob and tube conductors in the basement until later on then BX style wire was in the basement and then it went to single conductor after the first floor. After 1930 though, they started using BX throughout the house. Now, this gentleman that made a comment on one of the videos was stating that his house was built in 1925 and they used all of BX wire, okay? And maybe he thought that was safer. Um, I don't believe BX wire is safe in any way, shape or form. And I'll, I'll explain why. Besides the grounding, and I'll explain the, how the, the grounding goes into play here. Okay, so with B after like 30, it goes into BX throughout the house. So from 30 to 50, they did BX throughout the house. This is what's dangerous about BX wire. So with BX wire, you have the outer jacket that's not really a ground, okay? It's, it's an armored jacket and you have cloth wires inside of that armor jacket and those cloth wires dry rot, especially in attic spaces or spaces that are prone to high heat differences. So when it dry rots, th that jacket falls off the conductor. Now you have bare conductors within millimeters of 
the BX wire. Millimeters, all right? And with that not being a solid bonded ground, it doesn't always trip, okay? I've had plenty of BX wires that it doesn't trip. It's almost like an arc welder at that point, okay? Where with knob and tube, it's an ungrounded system, but there's no armored jacket around it. So if a, if a, if a hot knob and tube So if a hot knob and tube wire touches the side of a metal box, it won't arc it out because there's nothing grounded on that metal box. It's an ungrounded system. But if, an, if you have that BX wire there, okay, and the hot conductor touches the side of the box, it might not trip. It might arc weld, okay? And depending on where the loose portion of the ground is, doesn't always mean it's gonna arc weld in that box. It can touch the side of the box, nothing will happen. And then at a further junction box where it's loose, that's where it can arc weld. All right, so BX wire, because of the dry rotting of the cloth wire that are within the BX wire, that's what makes it so dangerous, especially if BX is installed in attic spaces. Okay, you'll often open up that junction box and the cloth that's wrapped around that conductor just falls apart on you. All right. So with our knob and tube rewires, we immediately include BX wire included with that. Okay. So with knob and tube, you have single conductor knob and tube. You have the BX. Okay. And you also have a two conductor that's, it's, it's like a fat black wire. It's cloth on the outside. When you cut the cloth, you have two individual cloth conductors. If, if you want to call it the very, very first forms of Romax, you can call it that. Um, we call it just a two conductor cloth wire. All right. Those three types of wire was used up until like the late forties. Okay. Until the next phase after that was the petroleum based product that wrapped around the conductors that was a it's cloth outer jacket with like a silver to it and the ground had a green tint to it okay that's the first form of Romex that I've seen in this area so in the 1920s the code book was small okay we I have some books that are published that was educating electricians on how to do knob and tube and the code book at that time was minuscule, okay? Um, if you wanted to go into the history of the code book, it was invented by a vocational teacher that wanted to get everyone on the same page to learn the electrical trade. And then that's how the NEC kind of came about, all right? Um, from there, okay, so let's go back to the 1920s. Different areas was wired differently okay so there's areas in havertown and ardmore that use the neutral wire as the switching conductor which is highly dangerous we went over that in another video of a three-way neutral system and using the neutral to switch and keeping the hot up at the fixture that's a highly dangerous system and you need to be extremely careful with it okay um there's areas so he this this person making the comments was talking about a home of 1925 being in BX, the whole house. And it totally could have been. Back in the 20s, like, you didn't always have to do what, like, it's not like the NEC code book today is for new construction where it's all done the same. You can easily find homes that have in the 20s knob and tube still in the basement. Then there's homes with BX in the basement. Then there's whole house BX wiring. So it was a little bit of the wild west. Okay, so, but BX is not a safer conductor than knob and tube, cloth BX, okay? I, I wanna say in my opinion, but I think, it's, I think it's becoming more and more known. Like electrical engineers have backed me up on that. So, 
But again, everyone has their opinion in this matter. Okay, you can have an opinion. It doesn't like, you know, my opinion is based on being 20 years in the field doing this. Okay, so that's my opinion. There's people that have knob and tube rewire estimates that don't include the BX wire because it's not called knob and it's not called knob and tube. So when I, I always educate the homeowner, a knob and tube rewire should include all three, all, all cloth ungrounded conductors, okay? Some don't, some say, hey, words are words. If it's not knob and tube, not in my estimate, and they get their number lower that way. And then the homeowner gets upset when they have an ungrounded style system. That's dangerous, okay? So that's the way it is. But we're gonna be rewiring these homes. Even the, the 1950s and 60s Romex, that's even starting to crack. So in my opinion, I think that's in, in 20 years, we're gonna be rewiring that. So I, I just think it's gonna have a life expectancy of we're gonna have to rewire these homes every 120 years. Just an opinion. But it's Friday, God bless. And um, yeah, we got a rough day coming up tomorrow for everyone that was working during that time period. Um, it was rough. Like I, we, I was actually on 10th and Catherine right over here wiring a home in MC wire back in 2001 and um we were in the city it was it was you know definitely a day to 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 take a moment and just think about what the what everyone went through especially the police and the firefighters all right um as well as all the other victims in those buildings so god bless enjoy your friday